to get Labor. These guys were just uh, supplying what was required. What do you think? Well, I don't like to think that anybody's exploited, and it sounds to me as if that's what were ha was happening. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a real issue surrounding uh, horticultural, you know, um, seasonal working. Mm -hmm. um, I think there are a lot of uh, orchardists probably are not able to pay for the for the help that they need. Mm -hmm. So you end up with. Um, produce rotting on trees mm. and that's not good either so I don't know what the answer is. No. The if they don't pay people enough. The government did bring in a scheme uh, a couple of years ago uh, specifically for horticulturalists uh, to uh, be able to bring in overseas workers uh, for a short period of time but it, uh, it didn't have to seem to have a, a great deal of success. Do you think something more needs to be done, uh, Brian? Yeah, I, look, we could get onto this, but I think mm. our immigration policy is, is very important and we don't seem to have a clear one. It's a bit like our overseas ownership. The Australian election at the moment, they're debating this very issue about migrant workers mm. and about immigration. And we should be doing the yeah, same. Yeah, we, we tend to respond to something like has happened in the reactive. Hawke's Bay mm. and reactive. Mm. We don't have plans. The Australians, I'm not saying Australia is the greatest place in the world, but they do think about these things before the events occur. And this issue about migrant workers is a classic example where we respond rather than having a clear plan. Right. We were in uh, market gardening and uh, we had uh, families from Tuvalu mm. came and worked on the in the glass houses and, uh, mm. and that worked and very well. And they worked successfully, yes. Yes, sent yeah. money home to their families yeah. and came every year. Mm. Mm. Which is great to mm. hear. Yeah. Now, uh, Rodney uh, has lost its last gasp bid not to be part of the super city. Uh, Brian, what, uh, what do you think? It was going to happen all along or uh, you feel some sympathy for those uh, northerners who don't want to be called Aucklanders? Yeah, I can understand that very definitely. Rodney does seem to me to be a bit distant from Auckland. I mean, when you look at the issues that we have here in the centre of the city and discussions about motorways through the eastern corridors and stuff like that, it's quite different to the interests and the local issues in Rodney. Rodney, so I'm very sympathetic towards them. But look, this is the bill, this is what happens. And often it's always at the fringes mm -hmm. that there's always the most dispute. And Rodney is obviously at the fringe on this one. Right. What do you think, Alison? I think they have to accept it. But I think what they've got to do now is to get somebody on the councils, mm -hmm. on their local boards, and, yeah. and so that they have a say. Really? And they'll be foolish not issues, to, wouldn't yeah. they? Yeah, good. You know, if they get at least half, there's mm. nine, I think, available spots, so they should be fighting hard to have at least half of them if they can. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Coming up next, we give praise and a bollocking where it's due in our ag sector. Stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back to Straight Talk. Now it's on to you beauty praise or a bollocking, the opposite. What do you have, Brian? Yeah, my praise this week goes to John Penno. He's the chief executive of Sinlay Milk. They tried to raise 150 million from the New Zealand public last year, couldn't raise it, but he's managed to convince uh, Bright Dairy, which is a Shanghai-based company, to invest over 80 million in his company so that they'll be able to build that new production plant down in Canterbury. So that's a very positive outturn for um, Sinlay Milk. What about the suggestions that uh, it's uh, a poor look for New Zealand not being able to raise that money internally, that uh, it shows the weakness of our capital markets? Oh, I think it's a very poor look and I think mm. it's very, very disappointing. A company like this should have been able to raise $150 million. It's not a huge amount of money. It sounds like a lot, but they weren't. We just don't have the capital in New Zealand and New Zealanders are very risk averse. They want to put their money into property, into houses and don't want to put it into our companies. And it's terrible we have to rely on a Chinese company effectively to do the investment on our behalf. But the outcome is good because we are going to get an extra production plant and we are going to get more exports as a result of it. Mm. And this just shows the broadening of the dairy industry, doesn't it, mm. Alison, from uh, you know a couple of players through to uh, start-up companies we're now looking at uh, getting into almost double figures. Mm. Sounds very positive, doesn't so it? So it's, mm. it's quite a change from uh, the old days. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Now, Brian, uh, I believe you also have a bollocking. I've got a very big bollocking, in fact, a huge <laughs> one, and, it's, and it, it's, it's for the Board of Directors of New Zealand Farming Systems, Uruguay. Mm -hmm. This was a company that raised money from New Zealand public at a dollar per share and then a dollar fifty. It has been managed and run very, very poorly, and as a result, Olam of Singapore is making a takeover of 55 
cents. So well below the price that New Zealand investors put, uh, uh, paid to buy their shares. Mm -hmm. And the reason why the offer is so low is because it has been managed very, very poorly. Mm -hmm. Strategy was all wrong. So they deserve the biggest bollocking we can give them. <laughs> but Olam looks set to uh, make a good success of the venture. They'll certainly have the uh, money and the grunt behind them to uh, do what they want to with the investment, won't they? Yeah, I, I feel that they'll only get to about 51%. So it'll still mm -hmm. remain an, a New Zealand listed company and the uh, the New Zealand shareholders should do better with Olam running it rather than the directors who've come from PGW rights. And so mm -hmm. it's not all gloom and doom, but you know, still, if you've invested a dollar and a dollar fifty per share, you want you, you don't want to wait four or five years before the mm -hmm. share price gets back mm -hmm. to that. I'm confident that under Olam there's a good chance it will, but it's it's it should never have got down to the level that it's at at the moment. Do you think it will put New Zealand investors off uh, any agricultural uh, investments, particularly overseas from here on? Uh, well, it will. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, because a lot of people got very enthusiastic, and actually dairy farmers, New Zealand dairy farmers, mm -hmm. were the major investors. They went to Uruguay, they looked at it, mm -hmm. but what the company did was it spent all the money on land and didn't realise that you know you do need to spend money on irrigation so that when it actually looked at irrigation uh, strategies it didn't have the money so it had to borrow it so it spent too much of the initial funds on buying land rather than putting in good irrigation systems on these farms. Right. Now Alison I believe you've got a couple of beauties this week. Oh, well, I'm very pleased to encourage farmers to support the uh, IHC calf scheme. It's been going for a very long time, hasn't 26 it? 26 years, I think. And, and I think Colin Meads has been the patron for most of those years. And he's done a tremendous job mm. in uh, getting out there and uh, putting the word about amongst farmers. Mm. Mm. And, of course, I've got a personal um, attachment to the scheme because my eldest brother, Christopher Ranby, is IHC. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it's helped him. Mm -hmm. I think they raise about a million a year with the sale of animals. It's a huge amount of money and uh, very consistent over mm. over time. Mm. So yeah. support the scheme, I would <laughs> recommend. Good. And, and what's other, your other beauty? Oh, well, I, I noticed that it was Bee Week this week mm. and um, nobody in the city seems to know a thing about it. But mm. um, it's trying to raise awareness about how important Bee is, bees are for horticulture and agriculture. Right. So, and, uh, uh, but there's still concerns about the varroa. Mm -hmm. They seem to think that it's almost spread throughout the whole of the country now. And any suggestion of Australian uh, honey imports uh, being able to come into New Zealand? Oh, well, that would I've, be a big concern. Oh, they it? are because oh. there's some foul brood or something that um, Australia mm. has got and we don't have. No, we so again, wouldn't. biosecurity fears are raised, aren't mm. they? We certainly wouldn't want to see mm. that. Well, I have a beauty this week for uh, blue. Lou Reed, former chairman of the Fonterra Shareholders Council. He was always approachable, straight to the point and put his fellow farmers first. New chairman Simon Cooper has big shoes to fill. Well, that's all we have time for this week. Thanks to my guests, economic commentator Brian Gaynor and journalism lecturer Dr Alison Usterman. And thanks to you for watching. Please email your comments to country99tv.co.nz. We'll see you next week.